Hi and welcome. Welcome to the Red Wagon Estate Planning and Elder Law Show, hosted by me, yours truly, Jeffrey Belomo, where we discuss all things estate planning and elder law. And well, hey, anything else we want to talk about. And today is going to fall under the, well, little bit of estate planning, a little bit of anything else we want to talk about. I am very excited to have Jess Delp with us, who is the Community Outreach Coordinator at Belomo & Associates, and I have known Jess for years, which I am sure we will get into on this podcast. So uh, it took me a lot of years to get her over to the dark side, but uh, now that we have her, I, I, I think she's having a good time, and uh, I think she's enjoying herself, and we'll get to talk a little bit about that. I just want to do a little bit of introduction on the Red Wagon Estate Planning and Elder Law Show. Like any other show, please do not take legal advice from this show. If you're looking for an attorney for legal advice, please seek an attorney in your state that is licensed in the state that you are in, that you are a resident of, and that specializes in the area that you are looking for. Uh, We all do certain things and we do them well. So make sure you look up attorneys who do what you're looking for and who does it well. If you're in Pennsylvania and you're looking for something in the estate planning and elder law context, we would be honored for you to give us a call at 717 845-5390 or check us out on the web at www.belomoassociates.com. We offer free educational workshops in estate planning, in crisis Medicaid planning, in special needs planning, as well as in probate and trust administration. Pretty much we have our workshop for you. So give us a call and we'll be able to set you up in the uh, current workshop that we have or send you a link for the workshop if it's what you need. And we will definitely be able to provide some advice. All right. Well, Jess, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Doing great. Excellent. How are you? I'm doing well. It is so good to have you here. We've been talking about doing this for a long time, and uh, I'm glad the schedule's finally worked out, and we were able to do it. So um, I don't know. Tell tell the, the listeners a little bit about what you do at Belomo and Associates and what your day looks like. Oh my gosh, yeah. So I am the community outreach coordinator, which is exactly like it sounds. I'm out in the community meeting people, connecting, networking, letting them know what we do, how we can support them, their clients, the people that they work with, um, getting Jeff's calendar filled so that he can be out in the community educating and doing um, joint presentations or community presentations. And so really just trying to make sure that we support the community in a variety of ways. And again, really just letting them know who we are, what we do and why they should work with us. That is awesome. And I'm telling you, there is nobody better. So for the listeners, uh, I tried to get Jess uh, several times. Um, and at that time, you were you were very, very happy and uh, kind of politely declined every time that I asked, which you were always very respectful. And uh, eventually you said, you know what, there's a bit of change and uh, I'm definitely interested. Yep. Yep. It worked out great. So. It sure did. It sure did. So I I am glad that uh, it worked out. I, I tried several times. I, I think at that point I had given up, but uh, I'm so glad that you reached out to me. You had always said, you know, I just, if anything changes, I'll definitely reach out to you. I'm definitely interested. I'm just really yeah. kind of happy where I am in my life and yeah. uh, and what I'm doing. So very, very cool. So as far as the outreach part, um, you're, I know you were meeting with a lot of financial professionals, uh, healthcare professionals. I mean, pretty much just out in the community trying to spread the word about what we do at Belomo and Associates and setting up events, I think is probably, I'm simplifying it. I understand that. Yeah, but. No. <laughs> that's the meat and potatoes. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the goal is to make those kind of power partner friends and referral partners where, you know, we have people that we can refer to when we have clients with, you know, certain needs and then they know that we're there for them. And then again, just getting those opportunities to be out educating, which of course is something we do a lot. <laughs> yeah, and we're we're always looking for uh, speaking events, community participation events. I mean, so if you're if you're an organization or a professional looking to have us come and speak, whether it be to your clients or to the community or to your church or reach out to Jess, uh, she would be the one who would coordinate that. Should probably schedule a strategy meeting to sit down and make sure we iron out the details of the event and. Uh, you know, who's going to do what and, and what the expectations are, but we're always looking for that kind of stuff. So uh, please let us know. And if you would like to be a guest on the Red Wagon Estate Planning and Elder Law Show, we also do that as well. Um, and certainly to this point, we have uh, we're, we have a good bit of people who are looking to be on the show, but uh, certainly uh, we're always looking for others. So again, reach out to the firm if uh, that is something that is of interest. So um, very, very cool. So 
Jeff, how did we meet? I, I love I love kind of the story of, of how we kind of met, do you? Yeah, it's funny because when people ask me like how long I've been with the firm or whatever, I'm like, oh, you know, almost a year, but I've known Jeff for like 12 years. Yeah. So everyone's like, oh my gosh, oh, okay. So I think, um, you know, that gives me a little street cred, but <laughs> I, uh, I, I mean, honestly, it was through Olivia's house yep. that I think we met and... Um, I was thinking about the other day when Casey and I, my husband, obviously, for those who don't know, when we got married, uh, you, I remember vividly the gift that you and Whitney gave us for our wedding. I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. And so, yeah, and Casey and I will be married 11 years in June. So we've known each other. Wow. Wow. I actually don't remember. I'll have to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It was, it was cute. I mean, it was that is very cool very cool i love it i'm excited i'm sure it was my wife she's the i was gonna say yeah i was gonna give you the credit yeah she's the creative one so yeah my my wife um is very active uh with olivia's house uh and jess's husband kc is the executive director at olivia's house and for those of you that don't know and jess you can kind of fill in the details but yeah. olivia's house is a grief and loss center uh for children who have lost a, a loved one or or a pet or someone who is significant in their life and um, it's all free. The programming is free for the people who go through the program. And Whitney, my wife, got involved because one of her students passed away uh, years ago in a horrible accident. And we became very close with that family. And then a year later, she looped with that class because the school thought it would be good for her to stay with that group because they had such a traumatic event. And then the next year, one of the student's mothers passed away to cancer. And so uh, she is obviously very close with those two, with, with that group, those two years. Uh, she became extremely close with them. Uh, but a couple years later, I don't know, I'd say maybe three, she came to me and said, I really want to volunteer and give back to Olivia's house for everything that they did for those two families and for my kids in the classroom. And uh, I'd say pretty much uh, she's been involved ever since. And other than her time that she has to come off the board, she's she's always involved. So. <laughs> The rest is history. <laughs> it is history, yeah. So, and I know you're extremely active, and yeah. you love that organization as well, obviously. Um, yeah. yeah. What has it meant for you? I mean, yeah. Anything? Um, well, meeting amazing people like Whitney and yourself and everything, I mean, has been tremendous. I actually interned at Olivia's house when I was in college. So, I did grant writing for them one summer, and I worked with Leslie Delp. And, um, <sighs> really liked her and working with her and the um, development director at the time, Vicki Friedman, yep. and uh, wrote all these grants and just learned a lot and had fun and loved them, loved the mission so much. So I asked if I could still volunteer and if I, I could help clean, like whatever they needed. So I stayed connected with them. And when I graduated from college, I went to York College. I um, worked for them part time. I lived in the apartment above their offices. Like we were just super close. And then at that point, Leslie's son, um, I've given part of it away, but Leslie's son, Casey, had graduated from his college and was working there, and I did not like him, and I was like, you know, I love this mission, I love Leslie, I, oh, her son's just a pain, but, you know, I really, really love what they do, so I'll keep helping them out, um, and then fast forward a couple years later, I took a full-time job somewhere else, and uh, Casey was my neighbor, and then we got married, so... I did not know that story, Jess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I knew Leslie. I knew my mother-in-law before I knew Casey. And uh, I thought Casey was kind of a brat. <laughs> but, uh, but it all worked out. I, I, uh, he's, he's a hard worker. He's a very hard worker. And so I think probably our styles were just a little different. <laughs> and so not that I'm not a hard worker, but just that he's yeah. pretty, um, you know, type A. And so... Yes. And I'm, more, I just want to be out with people, and you know, whatever. I'm not always great at the details, so I thought he was kind of a pain. But now I understand and appreciate him for who he is, and I love that family, and I love that mission. So it was just really cool to be able to kind of marry into it. <laughs> what a great freaking story! I did not know that. Yeah. Yep, yep. Wow. Look at you now, as they yeah. say. Yeah. Wow. That is so cool. Yeah. Wow. And you know, I never asked you this. When you guys got married, you said it was like 11 years ago. And you ended up going to Vegas. We did. Was there a reason? Was there any story behind that? Or is that just more of a, we wanted to kind of do yeah. a destination? Um, a little column A, a little column B. It kind of got to the point where planning wasn't fun anymore. It was yeah. just stressing 
us out and I was like, forget it, we're going to the courthouse, I don't want to do this. And Casey was like, well, you know, whatever you want, honey, but I'm thinking you might regret that later. And so he had talked about a destination wedding for a while. <sighs> and he had been to Las Vegas with Lonnie um, and yep. Vicky. Um, and I had never been before, but he was like, it's beautiful. I mean, we looked at cruises and stuff too. He's like, but it's beautiful. There's so much to do. It's so fun. It's your type of energy. So I just trusted him and said, all right, let's go. So we got a really great package at the Bellagio. They live streamed our wedding. So those who couldn't be there in person could still watch. And wow. uh, we still had 32 people in the room, which was way more than I thought was going to come. Uh, and it was awesome. And I wouldn't, re you know, I wouldn't change a thing. I don't regret anything. And so it all just kind of worked out. How That's cool. awesome. We were, we were, uh, I think away that weekend, there was something that weekend and we weren't able to go. And it was so disappointing. We still talk about that to this day. That's the one regret. I don't have many regrets in life, but not being able to make it. And it was legit. I mean, we really were away or there was something going on. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it was very cool. It was very cool. Well, maybe sometime we'll just go back and relive it, huh? I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. You, you've been recently. Casey's been recently. I need to get back. All right. Well, let's get you back. And we'll say it's about your wedding. All right. We'll make some excuse about it. <laughs> we couldn't be there with you. So we have to now relive it. So like that it. is awesome. So tell us a little bit. I know that you are very kind of still active to this day in the Girl Scouts. I know that's very near and dear to your heart. And yeah. um, I, I just love that story, too. I mean, you were with them for a lot of years. I was, yeah. I, I'm, I've been in the nonprofit sector for most of my career until yeah. recently, and uh, so I love working with Big Brothers Big Sisters, obviously Olivia's house, and um, I was a Girl Scout growing up, and so I guess, I don't know, 2014, I um, got a job with the Girl Scouts and uh, worked there for about eight years and kind of moved through the ranks until I eventually took over the Girl Scout cookie program for 30 counties in Pennsylvania. That's um, nuts. Nuts, <laughs> by the way. It's crazy. Yeah. So um, very, very interesting. Again, my degree was not in business uh, or sales or any of that, but just really passionate about the program and working with the volunteers and the girls. And so that kind of manifested itself into taking over that program because the cookie program is really supposed to be an entrepreneurial experience, not a oh. fundraiser. So, you know, whereas when kids sell candy or subs for school, they're, right, they're just selling to raise the money, which is fine. But with Girl Scouts, you know, it's really supposed to be a program. So they're learning goal setting, money management, people skills, decision making. It's all built into that uh, learning experience, which I loved. Yeah, so, that is cool. I didn't realize there was all that behind that. That's nuts. Yeah, That's yeah, great. They earn the badges. It's just all these programmatic pieces so that it's not just a you know, uh, money transaction, but I was the top seller for Girl Scout cookies in high school. No I surprise. Not, I, yeah, I was not afraid to take my card to anyone and everyone. I didn't care if they knew I was a Girl Scout. I wanted the tchotchkes <laughs> that I could earn. I was like, let's go. We're selling these. Like, That's uh, awesome. I think they were like three bucks back then. They're not anymore, but um, yeah. It has so, served you well though. I mean, that's a I skill know. set that you are very good at that I am not actually. It might surprise some people, but you are much more of an outgoing person than I am, and, and I appear to be when I'm on stage, but I, you definitely are much more natural at it. Uh, there's no I, doubt. I attribute a lot of that to Girl Scouts, too, just kind of getting me out of my comfort zone and, and doing some of those things. And then, um, yeah, I just, I think if I'm passionate about something, it just, you can tell. Like, I can't fake it. I don't have a poker face. Like, yeah. you just, you know, and so that makes it, easy to connect with people because I'm very right. I'm an open book. I'm very transparent and not afraid to introduce myself or talk or whatever. And so I think that that bodes well for this position too. It's really great to just go out there and, and get to connect with people. Yeah. I mean, we, we, I, I know, you know, this story, but, uh, I, I've obviously, uh, you know, practiced for 20 years, but been on my own for like 15 years. And, um, up until the point where Jess came on board, I mean, we never truly had just a sole dedicated outreach coordinator. Um, we've had people in the role and people doing other things, but as far as just that is focused their job, she held an event and I was in my office and I literally knew like nobody in the room. And it was the most amazing experience of my life because up until this point, I'd say most of the people who came to events were from me or, or relationships that I had or people that I knew. And 
I walked around that room and all I kept thinking was, I don't know anybody in this room. And this is the coolest freaking thing that has ever happened to me in my life. Like, it is so cool. You just know everybody and you connect so well with people. It is truly a gift. I, I, I really am not like, I'm not on that level. And, and that's, that's saying a lot. I mean, you're, 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 you're amazing. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. So, and I know not only are you, are you I mean, you, it is part of the outreach communication or communicator part, but you also or community part, sorry, but you also are kind of running and helping uh, the maintenance program or the Red Wagon Club at our office. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I love that. Um, so again, building relationships, connecting with people, that's what I love to do. And so being able to work with our, our maintenance clients, those that stay a part of the firm um, outside of just getting their documents done and everything, it's just been awesome. So I get to meet those clients and keep building that relationship and that rapport. And so I get to plan all the fun stuff. <laughs> so we do events, um, some are educational, some are just for fun. And it's just a great way to stay connected with these families. You know, we're not, I think people know that coming in, especially after our workshops and stuff, we're not your typical kind of law firm, but then to also have that opportunity to stay connected and engaged with the people that we work with is just huge. And so that's really important to me to make sure that they see the value in being a part of that group and that they stay connected with us. They know we're here for them. Um, even with things that just pop up and they need guidance, right? It, it right. may not be that they need to specifically come to us for one of our services, but um, now we have Meg, you know, who does life care planning and there's another great resource and opportunity. Uh, and so it's just a matter of, like I said, staying connected and, and having that um, relationship and that respect and, and doing some fun things along the way. So um, I know we have our big picnic coming up in May. So that's where we get together and, and feast and have fun. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And then, you know, every month it's different. So we've done, um, we're doing an organizing workshop to talk about different ways to organize. We've done downsizing workshop. We've gotten together and made cards, done crafty stuff. I have a paint night scheduled for July, which will also be a fundraiser for our Walk to End Alzheimer's team. So um, everyone can keep an eye out for that. So yeah, just great ways again to stay connected and get together and have fun and, and, and feel supported on, you know, on both sides. Yeah. And it's amazing that you keep all of that straight. Like I, I just get to show up at some of them and <laughs> you create them, host them, run them, prepare for, I don't even know how you do it all. Yeah. Lots of events. It's fun. Yeah. And you're obviously good at, uh, prioritizing and task lists. And I'd love to see your house sometime to see if, uh, all the stuff you have going on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, he's the organizer. I'm like the organized chaos. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's funny. I'm, I'm, I'm lists. I do like lists. Yeah. I have lists that I work off of and that's great. But systems and stuff, that's him. So he's, he's my organizer, but he's helped. He's taught me some tricks. So that's. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you wouldn't know it. I, I it appears as though that's definitely a strength because yeah. you're able to pull it off. So. You know, they, and then my 2 a.m. messages to myself, don't forget this, don't forget this. <laughs> isn't that the worst? Right. Oh, but now I've learned I just have to get up and write it down. Exactly. If I just get it out of my head, I can go to sleep. But if I don't, I'm up every 20 minutes worried I'm going to forget it. Right. Yeah. Terrible. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. I mean, it yeah. is. Man, I'm yeah. getting older is never easy, you know. That is awesome. So I'm kind of putting you on the spot as far as activities that you've done. Do you have a favorite event with the maintenance program that you've done or one that you're excited about or just, I don't know, just something yeah. in general? Um, that's a great question. Well, I'm really excited for the picnic. I was yeah. there last year, but I was, I think I'd only been with the firm like two weeks or something. And Somebody asked me the other day, I said, I thought it was within a month, so I wasn't far off. Yeah. I mean, I've been there a couple of weeks at the end, um, that was amazing because I got to run bingo. <laughs> and I had yes. So fun doing that. Yeah. And so like my dream came true. I got to call the bingo numbers and I had all these kitschy jokes. I had so much fun doing the bingo. And so, I mean, I might still do it again this year, but um, I, it was just, again, it was so cool to connect with the clients and do that. Yeah. So now kind of being in charge of that event from start to finish, like now that I get to really sink my teeth into it and I have some really fun stuff planned. And so oh. it's going to be amazing. So I'm excited about that. And then I love the feedback from the clients too. Like, what do they want? What kind of right. do they want? And um, really trying, a lot of them set a cruise. So that's on my radar. They want to do the cruise again. So yeah. Um, yeah, there's just some really, really cool stuff that 
that they're bringing to the table and ideas that they're bringing to the table too. Well, we definitely will be doing another one for sure. I mean, we may pull something else off, but at our 20th, we'll, in 2029, you guarantee it, we'll be uh, closing the office for a week, taking the team and their families on another cruise, which is going to be uh, a lot of fun. We've actually started budgeting for it. Um, we put money away every month uh, to start planning for that. So yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun and uh, that was a great event and I'm certainly looking forward to the next one. It, it's really neat. I had a lot of my friends who were saying to me before we went like, you want to go on a cruise with your team? Like they don't want to be with you. They don't want to hang out with you. And as I was on the cruise that week, like you look around and everybody's hanging out and we're having fun. And I'm like, Oh, I think they kind of like me. Like, I think we're having fun. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Like it was cool. I, you know, and I, I, I think you do know this, but Deanna looked at me the first day we were on that ship and they were doing a dance off. And I thought it was just a dance off. And, you know, I did my worm and kind of did my thing and we had to go out in the crowd and, and get clothes. So of course I had a whole group of people with me. So I borrowed Amber's sombrero hat and her glasses and I got Karis's purse and I was wearing, I think it was either Amber or Whitney's like uh, bait thing that goes over cover up or thing that goes over the bathing suit. And, you know, and then I was up there and of course I was doing my worm. Well, next thing I know, that was actually a competition to get into the lip sync competition. Yeah. And I won and then I was doing the lip sync every night. I mean, it was a full-time job, Jess. Like yeah. it was ridiculous. And like the one celebrity. Yeah, and you know what's funny is that week in particular, you know, it is a lot of fun for me. But it is, I mean, it, I'm on as well. I mean, you do have, there were 58 people with us. I mean, I felt responsible for everybody. It was coordinating everything and making sure the team was happy and the and the clients were with us. We want to make sure they were good. So I kind of in my head was like, okay, look, this is work. Like in two weeks, I'm going on a cruise with my family and I will lay at the pool and do absolutely nothing. So... <laughs> prepping for the, the lip sync and then of course I ended up winning it that night and the way that they did it on that cruise was it is the show for the final night so yeah. you are literally in front of the entire it's ship yeah. yeah and it was so much fun and I mean having 58 people certainly helped me uh I'm sure it couldn't have hurt right yeah, yeah. it was so much fun but I told my daughter I'm like babe those those days are I'm retired like when we go on the next cruise I'm not doing the lip sync she said we'll see dad We'll see. Oh, man. Yeah, we, just, we still have like five years yet, Dad. I, I, I'll talk you into anything. So as you know, I have a soft spot for her. And That's right. I have a hard time saying no to her. But uh, practice, I guess. yeah, you're right. I can see if I get. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to start stretching. Like you said, other people are like, oh, you want to be with your team. You want to, you know, they want to be with you. What? But it's so true. Like, I can't even explain to my friends and, and other, you know, former coworkers and stuff. Like, the culture here and working for the firm is, is just phenomenal. It's mind-blowing. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm so, so grateful. And I, um, I, I want all my friends to be jealous. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> you I, it, look. yeah. And, I, and I've said this to you privately, but, um, the one thing that I love about you, I mean, among a million things, but in particular, working with you is so nice because y you know people on the team think things, mm -hmm. but some aren't comfortable saying it. And as as much as you think you foster this environment that anyone can say anything at any time and, and we agree to it and we say we do and we, some people do, but you absolutely do. And you understand that that's the that's the culture we want. I mean, I don't want people to be upset in silence or to be talking to other team members or, you know, yeah. come to it. We can fix it. Like, whatever it is, yeah. tell us. And that is something that you're very comfortable doing. And I really, I think that's one of the best qualities in any team member, but particularly uh, for you and, and for this team, because then we know what you think. It's not, I don't have to guess. Right, right, exactly, exactly. And sometimes you know, it's just clarifying. Like yeah. in my head and I'm like, uh, is this really what's happening or am I making yeah. this up? But just being able to have those conversations and ask questions and clarify or figure out which direction, you know, I need to go is is awesome. And for me to feel comfortable doing that is a uh, true testament to you and Jenna and, and yeah. everyone too because, and Roz, um, yes. just because I, I do, I totally feel comfortable asking questions and poking holes and clarifying and yeah. you know, making sure, because the intent is good. You know, we want to be successful. We want to look good. We want to do the right thing. And so I think that that's the biggest piece of it. 
Yeah, and it's always respectful. You know, I mean, it's never inappropriate, never. You know, the one, I, I don't know that you were I mean, here, but you do know we we kind of read the rules of engagement out loud and stuff. And one of them has always been, you know, if this is not the right bus, you know, please tell Jeff and we'll help you find another bus and, you know, keep you employed until we can get you a job and move on. And, you know, there's been a couple situations over the last uh, 15 years that um, not many, I can think of two where two different people said, hey, you know what, you know, I'd love to kind of move on and do something else to move further my career or further. And of course we did it. Like I helped them find jobs. Um, in both cases, I sent emails out to a couple hundred people that I worked with nationally and trained and was able to secure jobs. But it's fascinating to me how many people from the outside are like, you did what? Right. Like right. you, you helped them get a job and you kept them employed until, yeah. Right. Like, that's crap. No, no, I really did. Like, it, it isn't crap. I don't want people to not be happy. Like, life is too short. Yeah. You know, I lost my mom at 67 and I realized, you know, healthy and went to bed and never woke up. And it's just life is too short to not love what you do. Exactly. You know, and there's no hard feelings. Like, it's not personal. It's, right. you know, so that's life happen. exactly. Yeah. But it's just, I tell you, um, you're a breath of fresh air. I mean, it's, it's, wonderful to have you your smile your outgoingness you're you're willing to jump in i mean um that is one thing that you know oh we, we need people to help with this oh i got it we need help oh i'll do it you know and so i just yeah i just want to say thank you publicly i mean it's uh it's certainly a, a nice uh great team member i mean i can't think of any other phrase other than just a wonderful team member and someone that you want to work alongside every day for sure yeah. Well, I feel the same. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Look at that. See, I told you 25, 30 minutes flies by when you're having fun, you know? I know. Oh, oh, you and I could do this. We could do this once a week if we wanted to. <laughs> so uh, I want to just thank our listeners for joining us on the Red Wagon Estate Planning and Elder Law Show, hosted by me, yours truly, Jeffrey Belomo, where we discuss all things estate planning and elder law. And hey, well, anything else we want to talk about. Today was a little bit of both, actually. We talked about... Uh, Jess being the outreach community outreach coordinator at Belomo and Associates, her time with the Girl Scouts, her love and kind of passion for Olivia's house, which started out first for the organization and for the, the leader, Miss Leslie Delp, and then ultimately for her love of her husband, Casey Delp. Uh, so that was a lot of fun kind of getting to touch base with her and her leadership in our maintenance program and our Red Wagon Clubs, working with our clients who we get to see you on a very regular basis. I don't know how else to say it other than they're part of our family and uh, we love being with them. So please remember, do not take uh, advice from this show or any other show as legal advice. If you're looking for legal advice, please reach out to an attorney licensed in the state that you reside in and someone who does the area that you are looking for on a regular, regular basis, not someone who moonlights or does things on the side. You want someone who specializes. If you're in Pennsylvania and you're looking for estate planning and elder law, please check us out, www.palomoassociates.com, or give us a call, 717-845-5390, and join us at one of our weekly workshops where we discuss estate planning, we do special needs planning. We do crisis Medicaid planning, as well as probate and trust administration. If we don't have a live workshop coming up, we can get you a link to watch it in the comfort of your home, although nothing beats being live. So please feel free to reach out to us. Check out our website. You can sign up there as well. And we look forward to uh, seeing you real soon. Thanks for joining us on the Red Wagon Estate Planning and Elder Law Show. This is Jeff and Jess, and it was great talking to you. Until next time. We'll see you real soon.